I wanted to talk about backlash. I have, I had, I guess, this aspiration to make the new mill with rack and pinion instead of lead screw and anti-backlash nut. So I came up with this test the other day, pretty ghetto, but um, uh, I have these little cheap $50 indicator, dial indicators, right? And so my thought was I could use just the single one of these to try to see how much backlash was in one of these. And so I wanted to show you that today. So these, these, these anti-backlash nuts are made out of Delrin, durable plastic, uh, self-lubricating. You know, I think that that just means that there's a very, very low coefficient of friction. It's not like there's goop coming out of here, like brass or bronze or something. And then if you look at this, what's happening here is it's, it's all split and the threads will match this Acme lead screw, well the one that it's designed for, this happens to be a five star, 10 teeth per inch, uh, half inch lead screw. Same with this of course, right? And then you have this spring system to hold this in place, uh, hold it tight into the, the teeth of, of the lead screw. And then presumably that as time goes by, if it wears into it, which you imagine it will, but I've had some of these running for you know years and I haven't ever had to change them, the idea would be that this would continue to squeeze in tighter and tighter. So what I want to show you today with this and this, albeit not perfect, uh, how much backlash is in something like this and whether or not this is some uh, way that you want to go with your machines. So here's the basic idea. Sorry for audio as usual. I'm behind the camera now. This, uh, you can take it apart, but you shouldn't have to. So let me, let me zoom in here a little bit. So you take this and uh, you thread this in here, but I've noticed that if you try to go from this side here, it, it's, it's kind of tough to get started, but well, there you go, I got it. So there you go. What you might do is if you put it in from this side and you grab this and you pull it back a little bit, it's pretty easy to get that started there. Then you just thread this on, okay? Now, there's a couple different suppliers of these online. I seem to have a little bit of a tough time finding these. Uh, back out again. This one happens to have four um, holes here for mounting. Now, I don't feel that there's enough torque on this or anything to warrant this. And the reason I say this is because on the brackets that I make, this is a little bit wide. And so, so what we end up doing is we end up drilling out a couple holes or what you can do is you can just turn this sideways and cut the ends off of here. Here's what I'm talking about. This, this one, what I had to do in the past. So, so here's just a little bit of, uh, you know, more about how I make my machines. So the ones I had before, they had just two holes here and here and that was real easy to mount. Well, I found the ones with four holes and the, the reason being, the reason, the reason I got this one here is because it was about $10 cheaper than uh, the other ones I was getting, which means um, they're like $16. The other ones were about $25 a piece. So these aren't, aren't cheap and I need four per unit. So, you know, you might even consider making one of these yourself, but you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what you're gonna end up with there. I haven't tried to do that yet. Part of the problem with these is you need to have some latitude here when, when you have your lead screw going in here and it goes to the motor on the other side. When, uh, I mean, you want the whole thing, of course, to be nice and straight without any binding from end to end. So giving yourself a little bit of movement in here, giving yourself a little bit of a slot so that you can move it side to side to accommodate where the motor is placed, which you can't move, um, reasons for that, you kind of want to have this. Anyways, let's talk about backlash.
I'm going to go ahead and jump in over the top of this and explain what's going on here. So I put a vice grip onto the motor and I'm moving it as carefully and slowly as I possibly can. And if you look here, watch the needle as I'm moving back. It's, it, they're, it's not actually in sync. It's just showing you what I'm doing here. But when I go back and forth, there is no delay on any of the back and forths of the needle that... Um, that I can see as any kind of problem. I mean, if, if it's there, honestly, it's not perceptible. I know it has to be there to some degree, but I can't see this. And if you're looking at each one of these lines here is half a thou, and I can move back and forth over the thickness of a line, that's where I'm getting my number later that I'll talk about that I think maybe if it's, if it's anything, it's in the order of like 10 to 20 millionths of an inch. So it's really impressive. So things that you would probably want to change, uh, newer additions, we have a thrust bearing right here. Make sure that down over here, then you probably also, right in here we have like a little shim, because this is a bearing right here, this is a collar right there, so that we don't have any any movement back and forth. So I think with the, 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 the you know, tightness, I guess you'd say, of the backlash, it's kind of also a testament to these Lovejoy connectors with the uh, the spider inside here that, you know, when I'm moving the motor here, this is tight there. There is no squish and movement. Now, another thing I noticed just now, too, is that, uh, let me move this around here. So the movement on the lead screw is very, very small. Let me get this set up here. But now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push on the gantry here a little bit, and you see just the pressure of pushing on it, I can get it this way. If I push back and forth, I can easily get it to go, you know, three thou back and forth. So that's a thing that I want to fix. So for contrast, let's go put it over on the centroid, uh, so-called, you know, professional mill. Let's see what, what happens on that. All right, so this is the thing that I got going on here. So I have a clamp up here just to hold this in place. I can't put this on the spindle. I do have the spindle clampy thing but it'll rotate, so I don't want that to ha happen. It'd be kind of nice if I could get it on there, but anyways, it's not gonna work for what we wanna do. And then I got this right here set up. This will be sufficient, and this is sitting here like so. So what I gotta do now is I'm gonna have to turn off the power so I can turn the, uh, freely move the, the, the thing, the table back and forth, but I wanna show you this. So. So here we are just sitting here and then watch. I'm gonna reach over here and I'm gonna grab the spindle. So that's just moving the head up here. Now I'm gonna push this table right here. Oops. Okay. There. So anyways, not too much different. It's harder to push, but you know, about the same movement as we get on the other mill. All right, so this is all hooked up. The machine is off so I can turn it. So here, just to, to show you, I'll move it back and forth. And there, it moves back and forth like the other one does. Okay, so I'm gonna put it on zero. Now, I'm gonna wiggle it and show you there. I'm actually wiggling it back and forth a little bit. And I'll show you in the, there'll be another little picture right there. Let's see if I move it a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, there's that. All right, so right now, I'm moving this back and forth. The dial is not moving at all. So I can move it, it looks like about half a thou back and forth without the dial actually moving. Now, look underneath here you, you see this right here I'll do the same thing just so that we know that it's not slop in the handle that's actually why I put the vice grip on there too you can see the lead screw moving well I think that tears it for me I, I was like I said going to go with rack and pinion and because of what I just found out I don't think I'm going to I've read a lot online about rack and pinion systems, and for a, a long time, I mean, that seems to be kind of the gold standard, but these people are mentioning that they have backlash issues. 
And the, even though they're not giving me, I haven't seen exactly a number, I'll look a little bit more. I doubt that their backlash issues are on the order of 10 to 20 millionths, which seems to be maybe what this is doing here. So I think that, that kind of does it for me there. Now, I, I figure if I'm gonna spend my time on something, rather than redo this whole system here just to see how it goes, because of also what I found out, I think I wanna work on the, the rigidity, you know, of this, this whole entire unit here. I think the time is better spent doing that. We've had some conversations about uh, not having this telescope here, but having these sides over here telescope and so that the whole X gantry goes up and down. And that might be a good thing to do. But anyways, for now, this is gonna stick around. I think this is pretty good. About $16 online, 25 depending upon where you get them. From five start, 10 teeth per inch, half inch lead screw. So incidentally, one last thing here, by the way, I have just uh, finished getting the, the hose, the, the lines hooked up for the new spindle here. The table's still a little bit in, in kind of a wreck here, but uh, this is done now. So I can finally get on to doing some videos that I wanted to do on cutting some other material. So I wanna show you what these can do. And by the way, I'm, this is, these are not sales videos. I'm not trying to sell these. This is just something that we do as a, as a hobby and uh, to show others how to do this. So that's, that's not what I'm, I'm trying to do here. But anyways, I do wanna show you that they can cut um, a lot of materials and, and we did just get back from the metal store and I've got myself a big slab of steel that I'm excited to get to cutting. We'll see how that goes. All right, thanks a lot.